Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to see third packet. Sending third packet. So far we have seen first packet and second packet. So initiator sends the first packet of the communication in which it sends the phase one policies initiator cookie, responder cookie field is set to zero, domain of interpretation is set to one and the situation also sends net T type that it supports. In the second packet, which is sent from the responder, responder sends the second message of the communication where it sends the selected phase one policies and the selected NAT T type, domain of interpretation, situation, and uh, the responder cookies. Third packet is sent from the initiator again, but before sending third packet, initiator has to do some preparation. It has to create some values. Let's see what does initiator do before sending the third packet. So what are things that, that are required in the third packet? How it calculates them? Let's get to it. If you remember, in the first and second packet, they have initiated these five items. The Hagel items, H stands for hash, authentication, group, which is Steffi Hellman group, lifetime, encryption. So these five values have already been negotiated in first and second packet, right? Now let's say they have come to an agreement that we're going to use MD5 as the hash authentication as this is authentication type so we're going to use pre-shared key as the authentication Deffy Hellman group 2 lifetime 86 400 seconds encryption as AES so let's say they have come to an agreement using these to use these parameters right now they both know the initiator and responder they both know that we're going to use these five parameters going forward they both have agreed on something right before sending the third message and the fourth message both initiator and responder they calculate something called as Deffy Hellman keys Deffy Hellman is an S metric algorithm what I mean by S metric is in Deffy Hellman it creates a key pair one of those key is known as private key and the other one is public key so let's name private key of initiator is A and the public key is XA. So Diffie-Hellman algorithm is a, it creates asymmetric keys, a pair of two keys, private key and public key. Private key, it keeps private, does not share with anyone. So only the initiator know about it, right? Initiator has calculated these two keys. How did it calculate these two keys? because we have already negotiated the Deffy Hellman group, right? We have decided we both are going to use Deffy Hellman group two. So it has picked up that value that let's use my Deffy Hellman group two, and I'm going to calculate my keys, Deffy Hellman keys. When it calculates the keys, when it uses its algorithm, it ends up generating these two keys, private key and a public key. So initiator has calculated these two keys, private key, of course, then as the name says, it's a private. I'm not going to tell it to anyone. So I calculate these two keys and keep private key private to me. Do not tell it to anyone. And of course, public key, I can tell it to anyone, right? So before sending the third message, we have, or the initiator has calculated Defrey Hellman keys, which includes a set of keys, private key and public key. Right? And then they calculate nonce payload. So the initiator calculates initiator nonce and the responder calculates responder nonce. So let's not get to that. So because this is third packet sent from the initiator to the responder, it will only have initiator nonce value. Initiator will calculate initiator nonce and responder will calculate responder nonce. Before sending the third packet, initiator has calculated a Deffy Hellman key pair, which includes a set of keys, private key and public key. And it has calculated nonce payload or the nonce value initiator nonce n i initiator nonce now we have all the information that we need to send the third packet so initiator starts creating the third packet if nat t was enabled and it was negotiated in the first and second packet then third packet will also have a parameter called as nat d the nat discovery if NAT T was disabled in the first and second packet and it was never negotiated, then NAT D will not be there in the third packet. So in this situation, in our example, 
we did have natty in first and second packet in the first packet initiator did send natty vendor ids that it supports and the second packet responder did select one of them and send the supported natty type back so we have negotiated natty between them natty was to tell these two devices that you are going to support the nat traversal that means you are going to figure out if there is a nat device in between right in between you two here in this path and with the help of nat d we're gonna do that to discover if there is any nat in this path or not and how does it work before sending third packet the initiator also calculates nat d values to calculate nat d values what it does it uses the source ip source port destination ip and the destination port values it calculates these two values separately source ip with source port and destination ip with destination port let's say in this case the initiator ip is 1.1.1.1 and responder ip is 1.1.1.2 and what port do they use for this i communication exactly udp 500 if you remember they both negotiated in at t type during first and second masses and I also told you consider them as a hashing mechanism that they have negotiated a hashing mechanism so using that negotiated nat t type the initiator now they both know right they selected a nat t type in the first and second packet so they both now know which nat t type are they going to use because the responder replied with only one he said let's do this let's use this one now using that nat t type the initiator he creates a hash of these values so source ip 1.1.1.1 and source port udp 500 destination ip 1.1.1.2 destination port udp 500 it calculates a hash value of these two packets separately using the nat t supported nat t that they negotiated so it calculates a hash of them and let's say this hash value turns out to be a b c and let's say this one turns out to be one two three right. it calculates these hash values so this is all it does before sending the third packet so once again before sending the third packet what do we do the initiator calculates defi hellman key pair which includes a set of private key and public key a is private key x a is public key private key is kept private so i'm just going to cross it and public key is can be visible to others it calculates initiator nonce it calculates the nat d two payloads and they turn out to be a b c and one two three in this case right these are nat d nat d values in the third packet initiator sends defi hellman public key keeps the private key private to himself does not send it it only sends the defi hellman public key it sends initiator nonce value it sends nat d values so these are three things that it sends in the third packet if you open the packet in wireshark you're going to see that it sends two payloads one is key exchange payload and the other one is nonce payload in the key exchange payload it sends your defi helmet public key in the nonce payload it sends the initiator nonce value let's take a look at the wireshark so if you notice this is also on udp port 500 source port 500 destination port 500 open the ic camp initiator spi and responder spi which are still same and then it has key exchange payload and the key exchange payload will have your defi hellman public key so this is the key data and it has the nonce payload it will have a nonce value and then it has your nat d here nat d payload so as i told you that it calculates two nat d values so one is one for the source ip with source port and the second one for destination ip with destination port so it puts those two values in here if you if i open this payload there will be a hash value here hash of the address and port and the second payload will also have this similar but not the same value hash of the address and port again initiator spi responder spi the key exchange payload here will have the defi hellman public key 
the nonce payload will have the nonce value initiator nonce and then you have two net d payloads this one and this one so they both will have the hash hash value of source ip with source port and destination ip with destination port so it's usually other way around i think uh, when you finally look at them it will probably be this is the destination ip destination port value and this is source ip with source port value you get the concept right it sends both of them it sends the hash of both the values source ip with source port destination ip with destination port right don't bother that which one comes first all right so that's all the information sent in third package I hope to bring more informational videos for you. Thank you for watching it. Please do like, comment and share and subscribe to my channel.